Rome's journey from republic to empire delves into one of the most transformative periods in ancient history. This captivating video explores the transition of Rome, once a thriving republic, into a vast empire that would shape the course of Western civilization. Through a compelling narrative and meticulous research, this video unravels the complex political, social, and military events that reshaped Rome's destiny. In the early days of Rome, when the city was but a humble village on the Palatine Hill, the seeds of a new political order were sown. The monarchy, with its kings and autocratic rule, had become untenable. The people yearned for a system that would grant them a voice, that would enable them to shape their own destinies. And so, in the year 509 BCE, the Roman Republic was born. It was a revolutionary concept, a government by the people and for the people. The power was no longer concentrated in the hands of a single ruler but distributed among elected officials and legislative bodies. The Senate, composed of patricians from the noble families, emerged as the governing body of the Republic. This elite group of individuals held significant influence and made crucial decisions on matters of state. They debated laws, debated war and peace, and guided the destiny of Rome. But the Republic was not just for the patricians. The plebeians, the common citizens, sought representation and a share in the decision-making process. In response to their demands, the office of the tribunes was established. These tribunes, elected by the plebeians, acted as their voice in the political arena, advocating for their rights and protecting them from unfair treatment. In this new republic, the Romans had a deep sense of civic duty. They were obligated to serve the state and uphold its values. Military service was one of the highest forms of civic duty, and the Roman army became the backbone of the republic. The citizens, organized into legions, fought to defend Rome and expand its territories. Through conquest and assimilation, the Roman Republic grew in power and influence. It expanded its dominion over neighboring city-states and regions, establishing a vast empire across the Mediterranean. This expansion brought wealth, resources, and diverse cultures under Roman rule. However, the growth of the Republic was not without challenges. The struggle for power within Rome itself, the tensions between the patricians and the plebeians, and the constant external threats posed by rival states created a volatile political landscape. The Republic weathered internal conflicts and external wars. It faced formidable adversaries such as the Etruscans, the Gauls, and the Samnites. The Roman army, led by capable generals and driven by a sense of duty, achieved remarkable victories, securing Rome's position as a dominant force in the region. But the Republic was not immune to its own flaws. The system of government, designed to promote balance and checks, was susceptible to corruption and personal ambition. The ambitions of powerful individuals clashed, leading to political rivalries and the erosion of traditional norms. In the midst of these challenges, the Republic witnessed the rise of influential figures who would leave an indelible mark on Roman history. Men like Cincinnatus, the revered dictator who relinquished power willingly, embodying the ideal of civic virtue. Men like Publius Cornelius Scipio Africanus, the brilliant general who defeated Hannibal in the Second Punic War and brought glory to Rome. The Roman Republic endured for centuries, navigating through periods of expansion, conflict, and reform. It was a remarkable experiment in governance, where the ideals of liberty, justice, and the rule of law shaped the destiny of a growing empire. But as the Republic reached the peak of its power, cracks began to appear. The old system of government, once effective in a small city-state, struggled to govern a vast and diverse empire. The ambitions of individuals began to overshadow the needs of the state. Rome stood at a crossroads, on the brink of a momentous transition. Little did the Romans know that their republic was about to give way to an empire, where one man would seize the ultimate power and never let it go, that man was Julius Caesar. The Roman Republic stood at a critical juncture. Its democratic ideals had faltered under the weight of corruption and political strife. The power struggle among ambitious politicians had pushed the Republic to the brink of collapse. In this chaotic backdrop, 
a man would rise to prominence and forever alter the course of Roman history, Julius Caesar. Julius Caesar was born into a patrician family in 100 BCE. From an early age, he exhibited exceptional intelligence, charisma, and ambition. As a young man, he served in the military, honing his skills as a commander and gaining invaluable experience. Caesar quickly rose through the ranks, earning the respect and loyalty of his soldiers. His military successes in Gaul and Britain solidified his reputation as a brilliant general. But Caesar had aspirations beyond military glory, he sought political power and influence. Back in Rome, Caesar aligned himself with influential figures, forming political alliances to further his own interests. He joined forces with Pompey Magnus, a renowned general, and Crassus, a wealthy and influential statesman. Together, they formed the First Triumvirate, a powerful alliance that aimed to reshape the political landscape of Rome. Through strategic maneuvering and leveraging their combined influence, Caesar, Pompey, and Crassus secured positions of power. Caesar was appointed as consul, the highest political office in the Republic, granting him significant authority. However, conflicts soon arose within the Triumvirate, leading to a breakdown of the alliance. Caesar's military campaigns in Gaul had brought him immense wealth, prestige, and a loyal army. Sensing an opportunity, he decided to cross the Rubicon River, a symbolic act of defiance against the authority of the Senate. With his army at his back, Caesar marched towards Rome, effectively declaring war on the Republic. The Roman Republic was ill-prepared to face the might of Caesar's forces. The senators who opposed him fled, and Rome fell under his control. In 46 BCE, Caesar was appointed as dictator, granting him absolute power over the Republic. Caesar embarked on a series of ambitious reforms aimed at restoring stability and addressing the deep-rooted problems that plagued Rome. He implemented land redistribution policies to address social inequality, reformed the calendar to align it with the solar year, and initiated public works projects to stimulate the economy. Despite his efforts, Caesar's rise to power stirred fear and resentment among those who believed in the sanctity of the Republic. They saw his actions as the consolidation of tyrannical rule, a threat to the long-standing traditions of Roman governance. A group of senators, fearing for the Republic's future, conspired to assassinate Caesar on the Ides of March in 44 BCE. The assassination of Julius Caesar plunged Rome into yet another period of uncertainty and chaos. It unleashed a new wave of political turmoil as factions vied for power and control. The Republic, already weakened by years of infighting, was teetering on the edge. However, Caesar's death did not mark the end of his influence. His adopted heir and great-nephew, Octavian, would step forward to claim his legacy. The stage was set for the next chapter in Rome's transition from Republic to Empire. Julius Caesar's rise to power had revealed the vulnerabilities of the Roman Republic. It exposed the shortcomings of its institutions and the dangers of unchecked ambition. The Republic had been transformed, and the path was now paved for the emergence of a new political order, one that would shape the destiny of Rome for centuries to come. After the assassination of Julius Caesar, Rome was plunged into uncertainty and turmoil. The power vacuum left by Caesar's death gave rise to a struggle for supremacy among those vying for control. Amidst this chaos, a young and ambitious man named Octavian would emerge as the heir to Caesar's legacy. Octavian, Caesar's great-nephew and adopted son, possessed the cunning and determination necessary to navigate the treacherous political landscape of Rome. In 43 BCE, he formed the Second Triumvirate, an alliance with Mark Antony and Lepidus, two powerful and influential figures. Together, the Second Triumvirate set out to avenge Caesar's death and consolidate their power. They purged their enemies, conducting a series of proscriptions that resulted in the execution of hundreds of individuals perceived as threats to their authority. However, the alliance between Octavian, Antony, and Lepidus was tenuous at best. Rivalries and tensions quickly emerged, leading to a breakdown of trust. 
Octavian and Antony, in particular, became embroiled in a bitter struggle for supremacy. The clash between Octavian and Antony would ultimately culminate in the Battle of Actium in 31 BCE. Octavian's forces emerged victorious, effectively ending Antony's aspirations for power. With this decisive triumph, Octavian solidified his position as the dominant figure in Rome. In the aftermath of his victory, Octavian returned to Rome as a celebrated hero. The Senate bestowed upon him the title of Augustus, meaning, the revered one. This marked the beginning of his reign as the first Roman emperor and the birth of the Roman Empire. Augustus embarked on a series of far-reaching reforms that aimed to stabilize Rome and secure its future. He implemented measures to restore public morality, reformed the military, and established a system of government that would endure for centuries. Under Augustus' rule, Rome experienced a period of relative peace and stability known as the Pax Romana, or Roman peace. The empire expanded its borders, incorporating new territories and establishing a vast network of roads and infrastructure. Trade flourished, and a sense of unity pervaded the diverse regions under Roman control. To solidify his power, Augustus skillfully cultivated an image of piety, wisdom, and benevolence. He portrayed himself as a guardian of traditional Roman values and a patron of the arts and literature. This patronage fostered a cultural renaissance, with renowned poets such as Virgil and Horace producing enduring works that celebrated the glory of Rome. Augustus' reign set a precedent for future emperors. The Roman Empire would be ruled by a series of emperors, some benevolent and capable, others corrupt and despotic. The transition from republic to empire marked a fundamental shift in the structure of Roman governance. The Senate, once the driving force behind the Republic, became a symbolic institution, its power diminished in the face of imperial authority. As the Roman Empire expanded, it faced new challenges and threats. The Empire's vast size made it increasingly difficult to govern effectively. Economic disparities, social unrest, and external invasions posed significant challenges to the stability of the Empire. Nevertheless, the transition from republic to empire under Augustus laid the foundation for the long-lasting dominance of Rome. It set in motion a new era in which emperors would wield absolute power, shaping the destiny of the empire and leaving an indelible mark on the course of Western civilization. With the establishment of the Roman Empire, a new element of power and control emerged, the imperial cult. The fusion of religion and politics became a crucial tool for the emperors to assert their authority and maintain the loyalty of their subjects. The imperial cult was a state-sanctioned religious practice that deified the emperors and revered them as divine figures. It was a deliberate strategy employed by the emperors to enhance their legitimacy and solidify their position as the rightful rulers of the empire. Emperor Augustus, recognizing the importance of religion in unifying the diverse populations of the empire, skillfully promoted the veneration of his person. He encouraged the worship of the genius of the emperor, a divine spirit that embodied his unique qualities and virtues. Under Augustus and subsequent emperors, temples were constructed and ceremonies were held throughout the empire to honor and worship the divine essence of the emperors. These rituals and cultic practices became an integral part of Roman religious life, intertwining the spiritual and political realms. By integrating the imperial cult into the religious fabric of the empire, the emperors sought to establish a sense of unity and loyalty among the populace. The veneration of the emperor became a civic duty, an expression of loyalty to the state and its divine ruler. Furthermore, the imperial cult served as a means of communication between the emperors and their subjects. It provided a platform for the emperors to disseminate their messages, policies, and propaganda. Through religious ceremonies and imperial cult associations, the emperors could convey their benevolence, power, and divine mandate. While the imperial cult played a significant role in promoting loyalty to the emperors, it also had its critics and detractors. Some saw it as a departure from traditional Roman religious practices, which emphasized the worship of ancestral gods and household deities. 
others viewed it as a mechanism for imperial control and exploitation. Nevertheless, the imperial cult remained a central feature of Roman religious life throughout the imperial period. Emperors, such as Caligula and Nero, took the deification of the emperor to extreme levels, demanding absolute worship and asserting their divine status in an oppressive manner. However, not all emperors embraced the cult with the same fervor. Some were more pragmatic in their approach, recognizing the cult's political usefulness while maintaining a more restrained personal involvement. Nonetheless, the imperial cult continued to be an essential element of imperial propaganda and a tool for reinforcing imperial authority. As the empire expanded and encountered diverse cultures and religions, the imperial cult underwent adaptations and assimilations. Local deities and traditions were sometimes incorporated into the cult, allowing for a certain degree of religious syncretism. This syncretic approach helped facilitate the assimilation of conquered peoples into the Roman cultural and political framework. The fusion of power and religion through the imperial cult left a lasting impact on the Roman Empire. It shaped the relationship between the emperors and their subjects, influencing notions of loyalty, obedience, and divine authority. The cult's influence extended beyond religious practices and permeated various aspects of Roman society, contributing to the stability and longevity of the empire. Later, we will explore other key aspects of the transition from republic to empire, shedding light on the social, economic, and military transformations that accompanied this pivotal period in Roman history. As the Roman Republic transitioned into the Roman Empire, significant changes occurred in the economic landscape of the Mediterranean region. The empire's expansion brought about economic transformations, shaping trade, agriculture, and commerce in profound ways. Under the emperors, Rome experienced a period of unprecedented territorial expansion. The conquest of new lands, such as Egypt, Gaul, and Hispania, enriched the empire's resources and opened up new economic opportunities. The acquisition of fertile lands and valuable resources fueled economic growth and prosperity. The expansion of the empire facilitated the establishment of a vast trade network. Roman merchants and traders ventured across the Mediterranean, engaging in commerce with distant regions such as Africa, the Middle East, and Asia. This trade network allowed for the exchange of goods, ideas, and cultural influences, contributing to a vibrant and interconnected Mediterranean economy. The Roman Empire's extensive road network, including the famous Appian Way in Via Augusta, facilitated the movement of goods and people, further stimulating trade. These well-constructed roads connected major cities, ports, and provinces, enabling efficient transportation and the growth of commercial activities. Agriculture played a pivotal role in the Roman economy, and the expansion of the empire brought new fertile lands under Roman control. Large agricultural estates, known as latifundia, emerged, with wealthy landowners dominating agricultural production. Slave labor was extensively employed on these estates, further fueling agricultural productivity. The empire's agricultural output was diverse, ranging from cereals, such as wheat and barley, to cash crops like olives and grapes. The cultivation of these crops supported a flourishing food supply, the production of olive oil and wine, and the development of specialized agricultural regions. Urbanization was another significant aspect of the economic transformation during the transition to empire. Cities expanded, and new urban centers emerged as administrative, commercial, and cultural hubs. These cities became centers of economic activity, housing markets, workshops, and a growing middle class engaged in various trades and professions. The growth of the urban population stimulated the demand for goods and services. Artisans, craftsmen, and merchants thrived, supplying the burgeoning cities with a wide array of products. Markets and forums bustled with activity, offering a diverse range of goods, including textiles, pottery, jewelry, and luxury items. The expansion of the empire also brought about the integration of previously independent economies into the Roman economic system. Conquered territories were integrated into the empire's monetary system, adopting the Roman currency, 
which facilitated trade and economic integration. While the empire experienced significant economic growth and prosperity, it also faced challenges and disparities. The concentration of wealth in the hands of a few elite landowners led to social and economic inequalities. Small farmers struggled to compete with the large estates, and urban populations faced issues such as overcrowding, unemployment, and rising living costs. Furthermore, the empire's reliance on slave labor, while contributing to economic productivity, perpetuated a system of exploitation and dehumanization. Slavery was deeply ingrained in the Roman economy and society, presenting ethical and moral dilemmas. Despite these challenges, the economic transformation during the transition from republic to empire laid the foundation for the prosperity and stability of the Roman Empire. The expansion of trade, the development of infrastructure, and the integration of diverse economies contributed to the empire's economic strength and longevity. Next, we will explore the military conquests and challenges faced by the empire, as well as the social and cultural changes that accompanied Rome's transition from republic to empire. The transition from republic to empire brought about significant changes in the structure and role of the Roman military. The legions, renowned for their discipline, training, and organization, became the backbone of imperial power, ensuring the empire's security and expansion. Under the Republic, the legions were primarily composed of citizen soldiers who served on a part-time basis. However, with the shift to empire, the Roman military underwent professionalization and expansion. The legions transformed into a standing army composed of full-time soldiers, bound by loyalty to the emperor and the empire. The legions were organized into cohorts, each consisting of several centuries. A legion typically comprised around 5,000 to 6,000 soldiers, including infantry, cavalry, and auxiliary units. The soldiers underwent rigorous training and were known for their discipline and unwavering loyalty to their commanders and the empire. The legions played a crucial role in maintaining Roman control over the vast territories of the empire. They were responsible for defending the frontiers, suppressing rebellions, and executing military campaigns to expand Roman dominance. The legions were deployed to various regions, including Britannia, Germania, Dacia, and the eastern provinces, ensuring Roman authority in deterring potential threats. The legions' effectiveness in battle stemmed from their disciplined tactics and superior training. They were skilled in both offensive and defensive warfare, employing various formations, such as the famous Roman, Turtle, Formation or Testudo, to protect themselves from projectiles. The legion's ability to adapt to different terrains and combat situations made them a formidable force on the battlefield. The legion's success was also attributed to their strong sense of camaraderie and esprit de corps. Soldiers formed close bonds with their comrades, sharing a common purpose and a collective identity as defenders of the empire. This unity and loyalty fostered a sense of resilience and determination in the face of adversity. In addition to their military duties, the legions played a vital role in establishing Roman authority and infrastructure in newly conquered territories. They were involved in the construction of roads, forts, and other infrastructure projects that facilitated Roman administration and communication throughout the empire. The legions also acted as a means of social mobility for individuals from diverse backgrounds. Enlisting in the legions offered opportunities for upward social mobility and the acquisition of Roman citizenship. Many soldiers hailed from non-Roman regions and were granted citizenship upon completing their service, contributing to the assimilation and integration of conquered peoples into the Roman world. However, the legions were not without their challenges. The demands of maintaining a standing army, including recruitment, training, and provisioning, placed a strain on the empire's resources. Military campaigns and prolonged deployments also resulted in the loss of lives and strained the loyalty of soldiers who were often far from their homes and families. Moreover, as the empire expanded, the legions faced increasingly sophisticated and formidable adversaries. 
Barbarian invasions, such as those from Germanic tribes and the Parthians, posed significant threats to Roman territories and required the legions to adapt their strategies and tactics. Later, we will delve deeper into the legions' military campaigns, their encounters with external enemies, and the challenges they faced in maintaining Roman control over the vast and diverse territories of the empire. The Roman legions, with their unwavering loyalty and military prowess, would continue to be instrumental in shaping the destiny of the Roman Empire. With the transition from republic to empire, the Roman world experienced a period of relative peace and stability known as Pax Romana. Lasting for approximately two centuries, this era brought forth significant advancements in governance, infrastructure, and cultural exchange, solidifying Rome's position as a dominant power in the ancient world. Under the Pax Romana, the Roman Empire enjoyed a respite from major internal conflicts and external invasions. This period of peace allowed the empire to focus on consolidating its territories, implementing administrative reforms, and fostering economic prosperity. One of the key contributors to the Pax Romana was the centralized and efficient governance established by the emperors. They implemented administrative reforms that improved the management of the empire, ensuring the rule of law, efficient tax collection, and a standardized legal system. The stability provided by these reforms created an environment conducive to economic growth and cultural flourishing. Infrastructure development was a hallmark of the Pax Romana. The empire invested heavily in the construction of roads, bridges, aqueducts, and other public works. These projects facilitated trade, communication, and the movement of goods and people throughout the empire. Iconic structures such as the Colosseum, the Pantheon, and the Roman Baths exemplify the grandeur and engineering achievements of this era. Trade flourished during the Pax Romana, facilitated by the empire's expansive road and maritime networks. The Roman Empire served as a hub for the exchange of goods and ideas between Europe, Africa, and Asia. The economic prosperity resulting from trade benefited both the elite and the growing middle class, stimulating the growth of urban centers and the rise of a consumer culture. Cultural exchange and intellectual achievements thrived during this era of peace. The empire's diverse population, spanning different regions and cultures, contributed to a vibrant cultural tapestry. Roman art, literature, and philosophy flourished, with notable figures such as Virgil, Ovid, Seneca, and Marcus Aurelius leaving enduring legacies. The blending of Roman and Greek influences gave rise to a rich and distinct Roman culture. The Pax Romana also witnessed the spread of Roman citizenship and the extension of rights and privileges to more inhabitants of the empire. This inclusivity helped foster a sense of loyalty and allegiance to Rome, promoting social cohesion and stability. Despite the relative peace, the Pax Romana was not without challenges. The vastness of the empire presented logistical and administrative difficulties. Maintaining control over diverse territories and appeasing local populations required diplomatic finesse and the use of client states. Moreover, as the empire expanded, the strain on resources and the growing disparity between the wealthy elite and the lower classes led to social tensions. These tensions would eventually contribute to the decline and fall of the empire in the centuries to come. Nevertheless, the Pax Romana stands as a testament to the empire's ability to establish and maintain a period of peace, stability, and prosperity. It showcased Rome's ability to govern and integrate diverse regions, leaving a lasting legacy in areas such as governance, law, architecture, and cultural exchange. Subsequently, we will explore the challenges that threaten the Pax Romana, including external invasions, political intrigues, and social unrest. The era of peace and stability, while remarkable, would eventually face significant tests that would shape the destiny of the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire, once a formidable and flourishing power, began to face a series of crises and challenges that would ultimately lead to its decline. 
Various internal and external factors contributed to this gradual unraveling, marking a significant turning point in the history of the empire. One of the primary challenges that the Roman Empire faced was the constant threat of external invasions. As the empire expanded, it increasingly came into contact with formidable adversaries, such as the Germanic tribes, the Parthians, and later, the Sassanids. These external forces tested the empire's military capabilities and strained its resources as it struggled to defend its vast borders. The Roman army, once renowned for its discipline and prowess, began to face difficulties in maintaining its effectiveness. Declining recruitment, inadequate training, and a reliance on mercenaries weakened the legion's fighting force. This deterioration in military strength left the empire vulnerable to external threats and invasion. Internally, the empire grappled with political instability and succession crises. Power struggles, assassinations, and usurpations became increasingly common as emperors fought for control. This instability weakened the empire's central authority, making it difficult to implement cohesive policies and effectively govern the diverse territories. Economic challenges also plagued the empire during its decline. Inflation, debasement of currency, and over-reliance on slave labor disrupted the economic stability that had characterized the earlier periods. The widening wealth gap between the elite and the impoverished masses created social unrest and discontent. Additionally, the empire faced religious and cultural conflicts. The rise of Christianity, initially a persecuted minority, eventually gained prominence and clashed with traditional Roman religious practices. This led to tensions and divisions within the empire, further undermining its unity. The decline of the Roman Empire was further exacerbated by the breakdown of infrastructure and the loss of vital resources. As the empire struggled to maintain its vast network of roads, aqueducts, and public works, the decline in trade and economic activity worsened. The diminishing availability of essential resources, such as food and water, further weakened the empire's stability. These internal and external challenges eventually led to the fragmentation of the Roman Empire. In the 3rd century CE, the empire experienced a period known as the Crisis of the 3rd century, marked by multiple usurpers, civil wars, and economic hardships. This period of turmoil weakened the empire to the point where it split into the Western Roman Empire and the Eastern Roman Empire. In the subsequent centuries, the Western Roman Empire would face further invasions, including the devastating sack of Rome by the Visigoths in 410 CE and the eventual fall of the empire in 476 CE. The Eastern Roman Empire, later known as the Byzantine Empire, would continue to endure, preserving aspects of Roman culture and governance. The decline and fall of the Roman Empire marked the end of an era and had far reaching consequences for Western civilization. The empire's legacy, however, endured through its legal systems, architecture, literature, and the preservation of ancient knowledge. Next, we will explore the events and factors that led to the ultimate collapse of the Western Roman Empire, as well as the enduring legacy of the Eastern Roman Empire and its impact on the medieval world. The decline and fall of the Roman Empire serve as a reminder of the complex interplay of factors that can shape the destiny of even the mightiest empires. The fall of the Western Roman Empire was a pivotal event that marked the end of an era and had profound consequences for Europe and the world. It was a complex and multifaceted process, influenced by a combination of internal and external factors that gradually eroded the empire's strength and stability. One of the primary causes of Rome's fall was the invasions and migrations of various Germanic tribes. Over time, these tribes, such as the Visigoths, Vandals, and Ostrogoths, began to challenge and weaken the Roman Empire's borders. In 410 CE, Rome itself was sacked by the Visigoths under the leadership of Alaric, a symbolic event that highlighted the empire's vulnerability.
Another significant factor was the internal political instability and power struggles within the empire. The constant changes in leadership, frequent assassinations, and usurpations created a climate of uncertainty and weakened the empire's ability to effectively govern and defend itself. The lack of strong and stable leadership contributed to the disintegration of the central authority. Economic factors also played a role in Rome's decline. The empire faced challenges such as inflation, debasement of currency, and economic stagnation. The heavy taxation imposed on the population, coupled with a decline in agricultural productivity, led to social unrest and a diminishing tax base. The economic strain further weakened the empire's ability to maintain its military and administrative apparatus. Social and cultural factors also contributed to the fall of Rome. The empire faced increasing social inequality, with a growing gap between the wealthy elite and the impoverished masses. Slavery, while a significant economic force, created social tensions and contributed to the decline of the middle class. Additionally, the rise of Christianity, which initially faced persecution within the empire, brought about cultural shifts and conflicts with traditional Roman religious practices. The fall of the Western Roman Empire had far-reaching consequences. It marked the end of Roman political and military dominance in Western Europe. The power vacuum left by the empire's collapse led to the fragmentation of the region into numerous smaller kingdoms and paved the way for the emergence of new powers and civilizations. The decline and fall of Rome also had significant cultural and intellectual consequences. The loss of centralized authority disrupted the continuity of learning and scholarship, leading to a decline in education and the preservation of knowledge. The subsequent centuries, often referred to as the Dark Ages, were characterized by a decline in literacy and intellectual pursuits. However, it is important to note that the Eastern Roman Empire, also known as the Byzantine Empire, continued to thrive and preserve aspects of Roman culture, administration, and art. The Byzantine Empire would endure for several more centuries, serving as a bridge between the classical world and the medieval era. The fall of Rome also had long-term implications for Europe's political and social development. The power vacuum left by the empire's collapse led to the rise of feudalism, a decentralized system of governance based on land ownership and loyalty to local lords. This feudal system would shape the social and political structures of medieval Europe. In conclusion, the fall of the Western Roman Empire was a complex process influenced by a combination of internal and external factors. Invasions, political instability, economic challenges, and social and cultural changes all contributed to Rome's decline. The consequences of this fall were far-reaching, impacting the course of European history in shaping the development of new civilizations. While the Western Roman Empire fell in 476 CE, the Eastern Roman Empire, known as the Byzantine Empire, continued to flourish. Byzantium, with its capital at Constantinople, modern-day Istanbul, stood as the last remnant of the Roman Empire and would leave a lasting impact on the history of the Eastern Mediterranean. The Byzantine Empire, under the leadership of Emperor Constantine, emerged in the 4th century CE as a separate political entity from the Western Roman Empire. Constantine's decision to establish a new capital in the East signaled a shift in power and marked the beginning of Byzantine history. One of the key aspects that defined Byzantium was its cultural and religious identity. While the Western Roman Empire was predominantly Latin-speaking and adhered to traditional Roman religious practices, the Byzantine Empire embraced Greek as its official language and adopted Christianity as the state religion. Christianity became deeply intertwined with Byzantine culture and played a central role in shaping its art, architecture, and society. Under Emperor Justinian in the 6th century CE, the Byzantine Empire experienced a period of expansion and cultural resurgence. Justinian's codification of Roman law, 
known as the Corpus Juris Civilis, provided a comprehensive legal framework that would influence legal systems for centuries to come. This codification preserved and systematized Roman legal principles, ensuring their enduring legacy. The Byzantine Empire also excelled in the arts and architecture. The Hagia Sophia, a majestic domed church built during Justinian's reign, stands as a testament to Byzantine architectural brilliance. Its innovative design, intricate mosaics, and grandeur set the standard for Byzantine religious architecture. The Byzantines were also renowned for their administrative efficiency and bureaucratic system. The empire was organized into themes, which were military provinces governed by strategoi. This administrative structure allowed for effective governance and defense, maintaining Byzantium's territorial integrity for centuries. In addition to its cultural and administrative achievements, the Byzantine Empire played a crucial role in preserving and transmitting ancient knowledge. Byzantine scholars and scribes meticulously copied and preserved classical Greek and Roman texts, safeguarding valuable works that would have otherwise been lost to history. These preserved manuscripts served as a bridge between the ancient and medieval worlds, allowing the transmission of knowledge to future generations. Despite its cultural and intellectual achievements, the Byzantine Empire faced numerous challenges throughout its existence. It contended with external threats from various Islamic powers, including the Arab Caliphates and later the Seljuk Turks and the Ottoman Empire. These conflicts strained Byzantium's resources and gradually eroded its territories. The Fourth Crusade in 1204 dealt a severe blow to the Byzantine Empire, as Crusader forces sacked Constantinople, causing widespread destruction and fragmenting the empire into smaller states. However, the Byzantines would reclaim Constantinople in 1261 and continue to exist for nearly two more centuries. The final blow to Byzantium came in 1453 when the Ottoman Turks, under the leadership of Mem the Conqueror, successfully captured Constantinople. This marked the end of the Byzantine Empire and the beginning of Ottoman rule in the region. The legacy of the Byzantine Empire extends beyond its political and territorial demise. Its contributions to art, architecture, law, and the preservation of knowledge had a profound impact on subsequent civilizations. Byzantine artistic styles influenced the development of art in the medieval West, and the Corpus Juris Civilis influenced legal systems in Europe. In conclusion, the Byzantine Empire, as the last remnant of the Roman Empire, left a lasting impact on the eastern Mediterranean. Its unique cultural identity, administrative efficiency, architectural marvels, and preservation of ancient knowledge shaped the course of history and influenced future civilizations. The Byzantine Empire stands as a testament to the endurance and resilience of the Roman legacy in the face of challenges and change. Although the Roman Empire declined and eventually fell, its influence on Western civilization is undeniable. The Romans left a lasting legacy in areas such as law, architecture, language, governance, and engineering. These contributions continue to shape the world we live in today. One of the significant contributions of Rome is its legal system. The Romans developed a sophisticated legal framework that emphasized the principles of justice, equality, and due process. The concept of innocent until proven guilty and the establishment of courts and legal procedures laid the foundation for modern legal systems. The Roman legal code, known as the Twelve Tables, served as a basis for later legal developments and influenced the formation of legal systems in Europe. Roman architecture, characterized by grandeur and engineering excellence, has also left an indelible mark. The use of arches, vaults, and domes revolutionized building techniques and allowed for the construction of monumental structures that still inspire awe today. The Colosseum, the Pantheon, and aqueducts such as the Pont du Gard stand as iconic examples of Roman architectural achievements. The Roman language, Latin, has had a profound impact on the development of Western languages. 
Latin served as the lingua franca of the Roman Empire, and its influence can be seen in the vocabulary, grammar, and legal terminology of numerous modern languages, including English. Latin remains the foundation of many scientific and technical terms, showcasing its enduring legacy. The Romans were also pioneers in governance and administration. The concept of representative government, where citizens elected officials to represent their interests, originated in the Roman Republic. This idea of civic participation and shared responsibility influenced later democratic systems. The Roman model of governance also influenced the development of administrative structures and bureaucracies. Engineering and infrastructure were areas where the Romans excelled. They constructed an extensive network of roads, bridges, and aqueducts that facilitated trade, communication, and the movement of people and goods. The Roman road system, in particular, enabled efficient transportation and played a crucial role in the empire's administration and military operations. Roman literature, including the works of Virgil, Ovid, and Cicero, has had a profound impact on Western literary traditions. These literary works explored themes of love, politics, philosophy, and mythology, influencing subsequent generations of writers and poets. Additionally, the Romans were adept at assimilating and incorporating the cultures of the conquered peoples within their empire. This cultural blending led to the development of a unique Roman identity that encompassed elements of Greek, Etruscan, and other regional cultures. This cultural syncretism influenced art, architecture, and religious practices throughout the empire. The legacy of Rome extends beyond its tangible contributions. The values of discipline, order, and civic duty promoted by the Romans continue to resonate in Western societies. The idea of the rule of law, respect for institutions, and the importance of civic participation can be traced back to Roman ideals. While the Roman Empire may have faded into history, its legacy remains vibrant. The Roman Empire's contributions to law, architecture, language, governance, and engineering have shaped the foundation of Western civilization. By understanding and appreciating Rome's enduring impact, we gain insights into the complex and interconnected nature of human history.